I walked down the hall of the girls' dormitories, my school bag in hand. A doll lies inside, carefully placed on top of a small box. I've been carrying the box in there for a while now, still not sure of what to do with it. This whole situation, come to think of it, is bizarre. While I've known of Hanako's upcoming birthday party for a while now, I had no idea of exactly what the celebrations would be until I found a single note left in the abandoned tea room earlier today. I hold it up and read it again, double-checking the instructions. The plain black handwriting's fairly legible despite Lily's blindness, clearly thanks to considerable effort and care. Hisao will be holding a party at my place. Please come at 6 o'clock to room 225 in the girls' dormitory. Sorry for notifying you this way, but I have class representative duties. Lily Sato. Not reassured, I continue walking down the hallway until I reach Lily's dormitory room. I hesitate for a second, but eventually give three sharp taps on the door. A brief and muffled exchange of words can be heard from the other side. Listening closely, I can just pick out Hanako and Lily's voices. As they finish, Lily calls out, Might that be Hassau? Yep, I got the note you left for me. You can come in. The door is unlocked. Glad that I managed to get the right room, I press down on the handle and let myself in. As the door swings open, my greeting to them is stolen from my mouth. Lily sits at a low table in the center of the room in her pajamas, while on the other side sits Hanako in a nightgown. Being dressed in only my normal school clothes, I feel quite out of place. I steal a quick glance at the lovely sight of the two, my eyes tearing themselves from Lily's long, thin, and pale legs, only with a measure of reluctance. Uh, hi. I, I think I brought everything that was needed, I stammer. She smiles and nods. I wonder if she's even aware of the pleasant sights she makes. The thin, dark blue silk of her pajamas really suits her, accentuating both her eyes and her curves. The look of her last night, that tentative and almost shy demeanor, seems all but replaced by her coy nature. It's nice to see her confidence return, though I can't help casting my mind back to how she looked back then. I look to Hanako, who nervously sits opposite her in her gown. It isn't a surprise that she'd wear something so conservative, though it definitely looks cute. Hi, Hanako, I say. Happy birthday. Ah, uh, th thank you, she says. She's unusually skittish, despite the fact that she's warmed up to me considerably over the weeks we've come to know each other. This is a pretty unusual situation, I guess. Feel free to take a seat, Hisao. I'll just pour you two some tea. Sure thing, I say. Lily takes the steaming red teapot from the side of the table and gently pours its contents into our teacups as I take a seat beside them, setting my bag against the nearby wall. With my senses returned and hormones somewhat calmer, I realize that this is the first time I've ever been in Lily's room. The first thing I notice is the ambient smell, just slightly different from that in mine, probably faint perfume or nail polish. It could be anything of a girl's, really. Another is the plain nature of the room visually. Beige walls, a smart yet unadorned cabinet, the lack of posters or wall hangings. It's distinctly utilitarian, 
something I should have anticipated given her blindness. The only thing that really seems out of the ordinary is several piles of books sitting on the floor, each reaching from roughly knee height to waist height. Some of them have printed titles, others are entirely blank except for dots of braille. The fact that the ones with printed titles are uniformly in English is interesting, though not completely unexpected. She did mention her parents impressing the language upon her and Akira, after all. Your room looks nice, Lily. I hear a call of thanks from beside my shoulder. Looking back to Hanako, her gaze is fixed in her lap and her hands are nervously clutching her gown. It's now that I notice why. With these clothes on, the extent of her scarring is far more visible, reaching down her neck and out to cover her right shoulder. Considering this is a party for her, she doesn't really look like she's enjoying the experience now that I'm here. So, how old are you turning, I ask her. Eighteen? Her look of surprise, not at all helped by her total lack of skill at hiding her feelings, shows that she was trying to mentally tune me out. This is really quite awkward. He, yes, Hanako says. On the plus side, there's only two more years till you can drink, I say. So who's older, you or Lily? Lily, she had her birthday in February. What about yours? Earlier this year, I say, so it's already passed. Unstated is that it passed while I was stuck in the hospital. That was a particularly low point of the experience. Conversation with her dries up as quickly as expected. It isn't long before Lily's finished preparing our drinks, setting down the three teacups in front of us. I pick mine up, immediately noticing a much stronger aroma and taste than the tea we've been having. Huh, it tastes different than the tea we have in school. It's a different variety, Lily says rather than the kind we've been having there. You've never tasted orange Jaipur before. Not that I can remember, I say. I usually drink coffee after all, like when we were in town. This is nice though. As we settle down and sip, Hanako seems to become more relaxed, or at least a bit less tense about my presence. We all finish our cups at about the same time, with Hanako failing rather badly at hiding her anticipation for the cake that's sitting to the side, begging to be eaten. Come to think of it, I'm feeling very eager myself. First things first, though. Lily, I say. Yes, now is good. Each of us knowing exactly what the other means, I lean sideways and dig around in my bag for the doll I bought Hanako as a gift as Liddy gets up and retrieves her gift. Hiding our gifts in our hands, we present them both on the table at the same time. Happy birthday! Hanako silently sits looking at them for seconds on end out of sheer surprise. My little wooden doll, replete with Victorian-era dress and a little hat, lies next to a light brown and fluffy stuffed bear from Lily. She clutches at her gown as she moves to speak, not taking her eyes off the modest presence. Th th thank you, Lily and Hisao. Her voice begins to crack as Lily reaches forward, wrapping her in a soft embrace. The sight of Hanako holding Lily so tightly is heartwarming, so much so that I couldn't wipe the smile off my face even if I wanted to. As Lily gently rests her face on Hanako's head, 
She speaks so quietly and softly that I can barely hear. Happy birthday, Hanako. Happy birthday, I say. Hanako gives a small nod, holding on to Lily for a time before breaking off and wiping an eye. I guess that for Hanako, simply having someone, anyone, to be there and love her would be special. The fact that Lily and I can now share that role for her is something I think I will always be grateful for. Hanako gently takes the doll and teddy bear, holding them both to her chest as she warmly smiles. For a long time, all three of us simply sit in happy silence. The quiet is not broken until Lily's soft voice beckons. Shall we have it the cake, then? Her proposal is met with two looks of unhidden anticipation. No argument from me, I say. Okay, Hanako says. Phew, that was good. I contentedly sit back, both Lily and Hanako looking just as satisfied with the food as I. It took some effort, but we managed to finish off the cake in one go. I don't think I could fit any more in, Hanako says. I think next time I'll buy a smaller cake, Lily replies. Hanako and I give a chuckle, but I can't help noticing that Come this time next year, we'll have graduated from Yamaku. That fact is somewhat depressing, since I finally feel as if my life is starting to get back into some kind of order. Idly looking around Lily's neat and orderly room, her books catch my eye once more. This may be a little impetuous, but my curiosity gets the better of me. Besides, I don't think she'll mind in any case. Hey Lily, do you mind if I take a look at one of your books? You're quite welcome to, Hassal. That said, if you can overcome two language barriers, I will be quite impressed. Two? Braille and... Oh right, English. She gives a nod. I knew you were studying English, I say, but I'm still amazed that you're this proficient at it. One could say it's a perfect way to avoid people borrowing my collection, she says. She says it in jest, but I am a little disappointed. Having all these books around me with no way of reading them feels like one big tease. Hanako giggles quietly as I reach over to the closest pile plucking the topmost book with only a cursory glance. Death on the Nile, in large letters on the cover, is the only printed text to be seen. I sit down for a while with the book open on my lap as Lily and Hanako talk. Try as I might to fill out the dots of braille printed on each page, they seem to blend into one another and become indistinct. I thought this to be a lot easier than it actually is. With some practice, though, I could see someone with a better sense of touch than mine managing to read at a pretty fast speed. Noticing a silence that had probably begun earlier, I look up from the dotted pages to see Lily smiling as Hanako sips another cup of tea. Is something wrong, I say? Quite the opposite. Your curiosity's quite endearing. I am inordinately pleased by the praise, though I can feel my cheeks heating up a little. Thanks, but I don't know how else I could act. To be honest, I wasn't altogether sure of how you saw us, since you were a new transfer student from another school. If you'd pitied us, I would have been quite offended, she says. There's a certain edge to Lily's voice, one that I'd quite possibly place as pride. Glancing over to Hanako, she seems even more subdued than usual, looking toward Lily rather than me. I wouldn't worry about that, I say. 
Considering the position I found myself in, I'm perhaps the last person that should be dispensing pity on others. My parents' first interactions with me after my heart attack, I wouldn't want anyone to see that kind of face. I catch myself from going any further, but not soon enough. Both of the girls seem to be put off, Lily especially. I'm sorry, she says. I shouldn't have gone that far. An awkward silence reigns for a few beats, thankfully ended as Lily's head perks up in a gesture I've come to easily recognize. Hear something, I say? The door. Everyone looks toward it, trusting in Lily's senses. True enough, the door handle shudders and turns, a flash of yellow and black slipping through. Akira Sato is in the house, she says. Happy birthday, Hanako. Uh, thank you. Akira takes a seat at the table as she plops her tall bag beside her. She has her trademark boisterous air about her, making no small deal of her entrance. Hanako clutches her gown to steady herself, but doesn't appear too shaken after she settles down. I guess she must have met Akira before. Not a huge surprise given how close Akira and Lily are. Akira doesn't seem to be the least bit put off by Hanako's scarring, despite its prominence, but she also doesn't pull any punches in how she acts, despite Hanako's shy nature. I thought you said you'd have to work, Akira. Did you manage to get off for a while? Lily asks. Eh, kinda, she says. I feel bad about ditching the guys doing overtime, so I gotta get back soon. But I felt bad about not coming to your cute little Hanako's birthday too, so for now I'm here. She grins widely at Hanako, who flowers into a full blush as he pins her eyes downward toward her lap. Her mouth seems to widen and retract over and over, as if she was trying to suppress a smile out of embarrassment. It's a little strange how her reaction seems to be more immediate and forceful than when she's embarrassed by the way she looks. All she manages to give in return is a tiny nod, failing to hide her appreciation to any great extent. Not that many people give her positive attention, I suppose. It makes me respect how well Akira can handle it, making her so happy compared to what little I could do. Now then, before I go, Akira continues. She reaches into the bag beside her and grandly displays her contents. Out come two large glass bottles, both with long French names on the labels. Hanako's expression is an odd mix of surprise and curiosity, and I suspect mine's no different. Lily, not seeing the proceedings, is oblivious to what's going on. Akira, this isn't... Hanako starts. What is it? Lily asks. Wine, I say. One red, one white. Ah, uh, Akira, that's... Relax, relax, Akira says. It's not like Shizune's here to scold you. Lily has a point, I start. That's not exactly allowed on campus. Or anywhere, really. We're still short of the legal drinking age, remember? Rich words for someone practically drooling as he examines a bottle, Akira says. She got me there. I am genuinely interested in trying some, even just a little. While Hanako may not be handling one herself, her look does tell me that she's far from opposed to the notion herself. Lily rubs her forehead, giving up the fight that she knows Akira would win due to simply not caring enough about how those funny rules and regulations. Just don't breathe a word of this to anyone in the school, please. I beg of you. 
I'm not stupid, don't worry, Akira says. That said, I gotta get back to work pretty soon. So soon? But you only just arrived. Sorry, Lily. Good to see you two again, though, and you, Hassal. See you later, then, I say. Um, g goodbye, Akira. She levers herself up with a grunt and waltzes out of the room, leaving us alone with the two items on the table. Interesting, I say. Lily gives a nervous giggle at her scissors, sister's antics as Hanako takes a wine bottle. So... What do you think, Lily? She rests her elbow on the table and pinches the bridge of her nose, thinking things through. She really doesn't seem to be able to keep up with her sister. Well, it's already here. We may as well have some. No sooner does she say it than I take a quick look around the room for glasses. So we arrive at the Lily's Path version of Hanako's party. Um, it is as different as the Hanako Path in that this is also our first time being in the room. Um, we've not been to Hanako and Lily's little tea parties before. Probably because Lily is not trying to act as a matchmaker and set us up with Hanako as she was during the Hanako path. Um, Hanako is, of course, uh, a good deal more nervous and uneasy at having Hisao there, being that she is not the one who is developing emotions for him in this time around. We then get a short little discussion of uh, serving two purposes of when their birthdays are. Serves two purposes. One, it's it's uh, his Sal and Hanako making a little small talk and him trying to get her a little bit more comfortable to him being around. And the other part being that you'll notice in a lot of these games now, they go to... Um, quite a length to ensure that you know that everyone in the story is 18 or older before the sex scenes start. Um, for instance, if you remember in in um, Emmy's route, Emmy points out at one point that uh, she's actually 19. She says, I know I look younger, but I'm actually 19. I'm older than you are because she had been held back a year because of her accident and all. Um, this comes up not just from an American standpoint, but also the fact that Japan is uh, having some changes in its culture when it comes to things like this, and it's uh, there's still very much the cultural celebration of the youth and all that, but you see a lot of the... Um, shall we say, more blatantly underage schoolgirl type stuff is uh, being somewhat frowned upon in their society now. It is, uh, let's say, cultural attitudes are changing toward that a bit. So as I say, you know, and plus with the, it being in the U.S. here, they're coming to clear, making clear pains to point out that everyone is of legal age before the sex starts. Then we arrive at the gift giving and the cake eating. Um, Lily brought the cake this time instead of his sow. And uh, as we said before, the the doll is given by his sow instead of Lily. And Lily gives her a teddy bear. I wasn't too sure at this point whether Lily was going to give her a chess set or not. I could not remember um, how that was going to play out. But uh, you also notice in this that that throughout this entire story, um, Hanako is is treated much more childlike. You know, in Hanako's um, arc herself, she gets treated that way at first, but every time someone does, every time talks about protecting her or pitying her, you know, uh, I think back particularly to the scene where you played uh, pool with her 
where you had the billiards game. There was that thing where he talks about, you know, I'm here to protect you, and she stares at him for a long time, not really liking what she heard there. Um, in that particular arc, Hanako has a spine of iron. She just doesn't show it very often. Here she is much more childlike and much more of a uh, protected nature, at least from the uh, viewpoint that we have of her. And then Akira shows up, bringing her bottles of wine as a gift. You didn't really think that was going to be skipped this time, did you? <laughs> it is going to be interesting to see how that plays out this time around. Um, with everyone's alcohol tolerance. Um, and with Akira leaving, rather than partaking in the wine herself. We will see how things go this time around when the three of them sit there and get tipsy. And we will see you that in the next episode.